um, their papers, which have been released in the last two weeks, but they were too exciting not to be put by the ads. So, without further ado, first we have Bauter talking about an efficient key recovery attack on the Okay, so well, thanks a lot, uh, Sorry, and uh, thanks a lot for organizing this special session. Uh, yeah, so I said it's about a key recovery attack on the SIDH. Um, I'll give Oh, you need to uh, click on the screen. Ah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, so, uh, because not, every, not, not everyone here is, uh, uh, has a cryptography background, I'll give a, a quick overview of SIDH and I'll try to highlight the special uh, bit of it, which are these auxiliary points uh, that will play a, a crucial role in the attack. So a very high level um, view on SIDH, uh, which is a crypto system that was proposed by Yao and the CEO in 2011, uh, is as follows. Uh, so we uh, uh, have Alice and Bob, and they want to agree on a shared secret. And so what they do is they select a starting elliptic curve. So it's called E because it will be an elliptic curve, but for now you can think about a region groups. And then Alice chooses a secret uh, subgroup A, Bob chooses a secret subgroup B. The idea is that Alice, Portions out A, sends the, the resulting group to Bob. Bob portions out B, sends the resulting group to Alice. And now Alice portions out E modulo B further by her A somehow. And Bob does the same. He portions out the E modulo A that he receives from Alice further by his B. Yeah, and then the, the idea is that both of them have uh, the same group, namely the original group E portioned it out by the group generated by A and B. Okay, of course, this is a uh, mathematical nonsense what is written here because this A is not a subgroup of E modulo B. Okay, so to make this precise, you have to say how A should be viewed as a subgroup of E modulo B. In other words, you have to provide uh, like the, the portion map yeah, from uh, E. I have to put it here. So you have to provide the portion map from uh, E to E modulo A, and this allows uh, Bob to view, to view B as a subgroup of E modulo B. But of course, this is highly problematic. And because uh, this just can be a and at the kernel. And so what Zhao and the Feo uh, came up with uh, was a trick to get around this. Uh, and this is the source of these uh, auxiliary points. Um, so what they uh, proposed was, um, well, on top of E, on top of the starting uh, curve or starting group E, uh, let's also uh, agree on some base points. Uh, so they are called EA and, and QA for uh, Alice. So this will, this will be used by Alice. And then they are called E and QB uh, by Bob. And what Alice does, well, she chooses her subgroup as a secret subgroup in the group generated by PA and QA. Okay, so she picks a secret scalar A, small a, and she uh, lets her big subgroup be uh, the subgroup generated by PA plus A times QA. And Bob does the same. Okay, so using these public points, they generate their group. And now instead of giving the quotient map, uh, Alice will not give the quotient map, but she will give the images of Bob's auxiliary points under that uh, quotient map. Uh, here? Oh, my apologies. Yeah, that's PB and QB. Yeah, I also found it for the people here. So that should be PB and QB. Thanks for uh, for that. Uh, okay, so Alice, instead of giving her quotient map, she just gives the images of the points uh, PB and QB under her uh, map, and the map itself is uh, kept secret, and Bob does the same. Uh, and now uh, Alice can indeed compute the image of her secret group and the Bob's secret isogeny phi B by using these points that Bob sends along, okay? Because what is the image, this phi B of uh, secret group A? This is phi B of the group generated by P A plus A times Q A. By, by, by linearity, uh, this is the group generated by phi B of P A plus A times phi B of Q A. And these two auxiliary points, they are sent along. So she can compute the image of that group. Uh, and the idea is that this does not reveal her, her group itself, uh, this, uh, the data that is being computed. Okay? And so this is what makes the protocol uh, work from a constructive point of view. That's, uh, here, this construction because this is uh, kind of uh, pushed. Okay, so now just uh, uh, to make things complete, uh, let's uh, let's give a simplified uh, version of uh, of SIDH, so the super singular isogeny DK Raman protocol. Um, so, as I said, the, the group will be an elliptic curve. I will here in this talk work work with a very complete starting curve, y squared equals x u plus x. 
Um, and we will work over uh, uh, Fp squared, where P is a prime of this form, P to the E and P to the F minus one. Um, and this, this makes sure that uh, yeah, all the P to the E torsion points that we will encounter along the way will be defined over Fp squared as well. And all the P to the F torsion points that we will encounter along the way will also be defined over Fp squared as well. So this is a technical assumption, but uh, for the high level mathematics, this is not important. And uh, the auxiliary points of Alice, that will be just a basis of this 2 to the D torsion. And the auxiliary points of Bob, this will be the basis of this uh, 3 to the F torsion. Uh, so, yeah, this is just to have this torsion defined over F squared, as I said. And now we just carry out what we did before, what we said before. So, Alice chooses a secret A, builds her secret subgroup uh, from this. So, this is a subgroup of the 2 to the D torsion, as you see, because it's generated, it, it's a, a linear combination of PA and QA. And now she computes the quotient. Okay, but this quotient map is an isogeny. Okay, so she uh, quotients out this uh, subgroup A and she lands on a codomain curve. Okay, and because this is a 2 to the E, a uh, subgroup of, of size 2 to the E, she can do this efficiently because she can do this as a chain of two isogenies. Yeah, so if this would be a big prime, this would be uh, more difficult. She, she does this as a compos composition of two isogenies. Okay, uh, Bob does the same. So this is the same as before, and he computes this 5D as a composition of three assertions because this secret group is now a subgroup of the P to the F torsion. Okay, and then the common secret is, um, is this, uh, this curve as before, uh, and to deal with this isomorphism, um, uh, we work with the J invariant of that. So, in fact, this is an isomorphism of algebraic groups and not just. Okay, so this is SIDH, or that means the version uh, that we will uh, attack in this uh, talk. Um, so this is a, a popular picture of uh, representing SIDH. So this uh, isogeny phi A of Alice, which I said can be viewed as a chain of two isogenies. Uh, you can also view it as a walk in the two isogeny graph. Okay, so with two isogenies, you can jump from one curve to the other. And so eventually, by quotienting out her secret group, so it's size to be to the A, she will make a secret walk in that graph. Uh, and that's how it's uh, often or, or most of the time uh, uh, presented. Yeah. And the security of SIDH was uh, uh, based on a, uh, this uh, rapid mixing property of this graph, which is a theory of Box. Okay. So let's go to Box setting because that's the setting that we will attack. Okay. So Box uh, secret isogeny can now be seen as a walk uh, in the three isogeny graph. So these secret steps are three isogenies. And so, if we want to attack, and if we want to recover box B from public data, we have to find the secret subgroup B, or equivalently, we have to find his secret walk. And so, this is this uh, isogeny phi B. And this is the public data. So, we are given the starting curve, we are given the end curve. So, if we would only be given this, and we have to find an isogeny, this would be a pure isogeny finding problem. That's not what we attack. Uh, but he's also given these uh, images of uh, uh, Alice's auxiliary points. So he's given the image, uh, uh, so, sorry, an attacker is given the image uh, images of uh, Alice's auxiliary points and the box secret. And so this is the data uh, that makes this isogeny problem into a mathematical problem. Um, and actually, people have uh, always thought that if SIDH would be attacked one day, it would be by using these auxiliary points. So they have been a concern uh, throughout. So here's a quick timeline. Um, so uh, yeah, the whole context is, is post quantum cryptography. So classical RSA cryptography or ECC cryptography will become insecure in the presence of quantum computers. Isogeny based crypto uh, traces back to the work, uh, to unpublished work of Kubernetes, but that was uh, not in the post quantum context. So uh, this uh, was put in a post-quantum context by Rostovtsev and Stolbunov, who rediscovered and refined uh, Kubernetes uh, system. Um, then uh, super singular isogeny graphs, so the type of graphs that uh, I plotted on the previous slides, um, entered uh, cryptography uh, in the work of Charles Gurren and Lauder. Um, then uh, in 2010, Charles, uh, Zhao, and Super have found a sub-exponential time attack on this uh, early system. And so this was the, uh, the, the provocation uh, for Jao and the fail to, to, uh, to the super single case and to respond to this SIDH uh, system. Okay, so this was uh, somehow proposed in response to this attack. 
uh, and completely within the post quantum uh, context. Um, and then in 2016, there was this call for uh, submissions to a, a standardization uh, effort by NIST um, for coming up with standards uh, for cryptography in a post quantum context, so to, to resist uh, future quantum computers. And SIDH was submitted under the name Psych. Okay. And so uh, in 2020, Psych proceeded to the round, to the third round, but as an alternate standard. Okay. So NIST already said this is too exotic, this proposal is too new to mathematics. It's very interesting. What is the most interesting feature of SIDH is that the keys uh, or the bandwidth requirements were very small. Uh, and that's similar to classical PCC compared to RSA. Um, so they said it's too exotic to really uh, have, a, have it as, a, as an official finalist, but uh, it's uh, still interesting enough to keep it alive. Uh, and so uh, Nistan announced the winners uh, this year, uh, but uh, Saif uh, was moved to an extra board. Um, okay, so the main previous attacks, um, I'm just going to highlight the distortion point attacks by, uh, uh, this was initiated by Christoph Kuti, and then there was Victoria uh, again, and Tony was also involved in there, and he did it here. Uh, there are many names, so I'm forgetting, I'm sorry. Uh, so they already uh, focused on the distortion points, and they uh, observed that if uh, these uh, parameters 2 to the E and 3 to the F were very unbalanced, then you could uh, attack uh, SI. This is a, an illustration that distortion points uh, make for an applicable i So our attack ran the heuristic polynomial time. This is for this specific starting part. I will say a little bit more about that uh, later. Uh, modulo some integer factorization that we have to do, but this is pre-computable. It only depends on the system parameters. And of course, post quantum, this is uh, the uh, so uh, I'll also say a bit more about that uh, later. I hope I'm not talking for too long. Um, but we will uh, target uh, Bob's uh, secret uh, to the F I suddenly using the uh, auxiliary uh, to the distortion point. Okay, so what is the idea? So recall this is the public data that we are given. We are given the domain, the full domain, and the auxiliary points. So these are the images under Bob's secret tree to the F I suddenly of Alice's uh, two to the distortion points. Okay, and the aim is to find uh, this I suddenly. Now this data allows us to consider the following uh, sub. Okay, so this subgroup is completely public, and it's a subgroup of a product of two elliptic curves. So the starting curve is E, uh, sorry, uh, one component is our starting curve E, the other component is our following curve And we consider this uh, subgroup. Okay, so it's a subgroup generated by two uh, couples. One couple consists of uh, PA together with its uh, provided image, and another couple consists of QA together with its provided image. Uh, so here's like uh, you can have like two elliptic curve axis, and these are two points on there. So this group is isomorphic to zmod to the e, that's to the e. And the question is, what happens if we portion this out by uh, an isomorphic? Now to make to turn this into an interesting thing, uh, we want to do this within the category of principally polarized in uh, surfaces, not so not just as in surfaces because that's not interesting and not easy to work with. Uh, and for this, we will have to uh, modify this group, but I will skip this because that will be automatic in our time. Okay, but in any case, we want our group to be uh, nice enough uh, in order for uh, the quotient uh, to be endowed with the principal polarization of an actual Okay, uh, so let me just mention also because we have two talks here today, let me give some context. Uh, so, um, this thing that you can Look at two two chains um, emanating from a product, and then do some cryptography with it. Um, this is actually uh, an idea that Thomas had, uh, but he wanted to do a constructive. He wanted to do a cryptographic construction, yeah, so he wanted to uh, contribute to I said anyway, cryptography, and so the goal was definitely not destruction. Um, and then uh, Luciano visited uh, Leuven uh, a couple of months ago. Um, and this was uh, also shared with him, and we'll uh, continue thinking about it because we couldn't finish the construction. Uh, and then four weeks ago, Thomas realized, oh, we can attack this, we can use the same idea for attack psych, and then a channel like that, two weeks later, uh, the same thing. So, this is the context for this near simultaneous uh, discovery. In any case, so here's the, um, uh, the main two pictures, I would say. So we are going to start from our product of elliptic curves, and we are going to portion it out by this 2 to the e times uh, 2 to the e 2 to the e subgroup. Okay. And typically, uh, this will be the picture. 
the post results. And because products of elliptic curves within the space of uh, uh, abelian surfaces are so rare, you expect that this will take us to the Jacobian alive elliptic genus super, well, the genus super, and so on and so on and so on. And we stay in the world of uh, uh, Jacobian of genus super. Uh, genus super. Okay. But in very exceptional situations, you might uh, land at some point, and we will uh, focus on the endpoint uh, on a product of elliptic and if we are in that situation, this subgroup that we are pushing out is uh, called uh, reduced scope. Now, um, the sum uh, from this theorem by Kani, um, and uh, this is a theorem that classifies reduced scope. So, so uh, it's a little bit technical, and I'm not sure time wise, and who the 25. The 25, yeah. Oh, 20 yeah. So uh, probably I have to be a bit uh, quick here, uh, but in any case, so the idea is that uh, if you have an isogeny from uh, uh, E from the simple curve from E to E prime, uh, and you can decompose the kernel of that isogeny uh, in uh, two subgroups, and by decomposing we mean basically uh, that the two subgroups uh, generate the kernel. That intersection is trivial. Um, then we call this. Um, this triplet, we call it an isogeny diamond configuration of order n. And what is the uh, n? The n here is the sum of these uh, two uh, sizes. Um, and then the theorem, I will, it's, it's a slightly informal statement, says that uh, if you have an n n subgroup of e cos e prime, then it's reducible. So if you portion out that subgroup, you will land on a product of elliptic curves. If and only if it comes from such an isogeny diamond configuration, and what do we mean by coming from? Well, basically, it means that your subgroup is uh, is essentially the graph of this uh, of this isogeny side restricted to your n part. Okay, there is a correcting factor x, and this is to make this loop uh, uh, maximally isotropic, which is uh, But apart from that, uh, it's basically taking a point P and taking the image of that point, taking a point Q and taking an image of that point, and if uh, P and Q are a basis for the n torsion, then this is an a maximally isotropic n n subgroup for an appropriate x, and if you portion it out, you will land on a product of elliptic curves. And this is an even essential. There are some subtleties, if, for instance, uh, the number of elements of T1 and T2 are not both prime, but uh, they will see that. Okay, so the uh, approach to the attack is the following. Uh, so we have uh, our uh, secret isogeny, and uh, we will draw some stuff to the left as you can guess already. Um, so this is the secret isogeny uh, of Bob. We know that it has the Greek tree to the F. And now the approach is to force this isogeny into an isogeny diamond. Okay, so what are we going to do? We are going to build an auxiliary isogeny from E to another part C. We are going to push these points P, A, and P, or K through this uh, isogeny that we construct. And the isogeny that we construct has to have degree, uh, the difference of 2 to the E uh, and 3 to the F. Okay. This may not be feasible, okay? but let's assume that this is feasible. In particular, let's assume that this is positive. This is definitely a requirement. So let's assume that we can find such an isogeny gamma. Then uh, note that we are in the situation of Kani, because uh, uh, you can look at the kernel of this composition. So let me write it here. So it's the kernel of uh, phi b conformed with the dual of gamma. Yeah. Then we can look at the kernel of gamma hat. This is of size uh, 2 to the e minus 3 to the f. You can look at the kernel of, uh, of what will eventually become the kernel of phi b, so it's, it's, uh, it's a gamma of b. This is of size 3 to the f, and you see that 2 to the e minus 3 to the f plus 3 to the f is 2 to the e. So it's an isogeny diamond of order 2 to the e. Yeah, and by Kahn's theorem, then uh, you can check that the x, the correcting factor x is 1 in this case. Uh, this has to be a reducible subject. So if you portion out C plus E prime, modulo this subgroup, you will end up with a product of it. So what is now the key idea behind our attack? Well, imagine that these points, imagine that we would have been given a fake instance of SID image. So imagine that these points are not the images of EA and QA under the degree between 3 to the F isogeny. Then uh, our reasoning is that it's very, very unlikely that we'll uh, hit the product of it. And that's because products of elliptic curves are so rare within uh, so this proportion uh, about one, one over p uh, among all uh, elliptic surfaces. Okay, so that's the idea. 
And so here's an uh, E attack. So we have uh, E uh, and E prime. So this is uh, the secret I said in 5D. And we decompose it into its uh, three isogeny steps. It's between three steps. And we are going to uh, look for phi one uh, first. So what are we going to do? Well, phi one, there are three options for that. So we will try each of these options. And let's say that the uh, uh, phi one uh, question mark is an option that we try. We land on the curve E1 question mark. And the question is, uh, is this phi one? OK. We push through these points to our guess. And if our guess is correct, then uh, this curve is connected to E prime through an, an isogeny of the Greek tree to the F minus one. Yeah. And this isogeny maps these uh, points that were pushed through to these uh, domains. And so uh, we build an auxiliary isogeny if we succeed, uh, and we test uh, reducibility of the so If it's indeed reducible, we'll probably make a correct guess. If it's, if it's not reducible, so if we land on the token of the use looper, then we uh, probably made the wrong guess. And we try with another uh, one question. Okay. And then we continue in this way. And once we have found the correct uh, phi one, we can now start from E1. Uh, and then, uh, so um, you see that the C, you know, the degree of the auxiliary I said, it changes all the time, uh, and so on. And so we rebuild uh, the phi. Okay. So, uh, so that's the attack. Is that kind of clear? Um, okay. So now I want to say something about, uh, I want to. Say some things uh, for sure. Um, so I'll be a bit quick here. In any case, so the goal uh, in each iteration of the attack is to build this auxiliary isogeny. And the isogeny has to have degree uh, 2 to the e minus 3 to the f minus 5, the right step. Okay. And so, what is our approach? Uh, the approach is uh, to use the fact that we uh, know a path from our starting curve e and that the starting curve e is special. The starting curve E, remember, was y squared equals x cubed plus x. Yeah. And so uh, this comes equipped with this uh, square root minus one and the morphism. And we will use this square root minus one and the morphism as follows. So we hope that the degree of the isogeny that we are targeting is a sum of two squares. This probability is not unreasonable. Uh, and if it's a sum of two squares, we can write it uh, as u plus ib times u minus ib for certain integer u e. And this allows us to build this endomorphism of E. And this degree, the degree of this endomorphism is exactly C. And now we are going to build this gamma uh, by uh, walking in this direction, applying this, and then uh, applying a twisted version of the view of this. So basically, what we are going to do is we are going to uh, map the kernel of this under this epsilon to a new kernel, and we are going to propose the It's a bit technical. In any case, we can use this. Um, this uh, uh, endomorphism of the green C to build an isogeny of the green C. So that's, uh, that's what we do. Uh, okay, so this hope is not totally unreasonable, but most integers are not the sum of two squares. So, uh, um, in any case, so what is the cost of it deciding the existence of this, of this uh, decomposition of this square plus uh, this square? That's where the factoring comes from. And we have to factor these numbers and then we have to check if each prime factor basically is one model of four. Uh, and then once you have this factorization, writing as a sum of two squares is very easy. Uh, you can use this algorithm. So note that this only depends on the system parameters, as I said. Uh, so you can do this just uh, once. Uh, and now an important remark here, what if it does not fit such a decomposition? Then we can create uh, a bit of a leeway. How do we do that? Well, uh, we are not forced to put two to the e here. We can put anything that's smaller than that. If you have two to the e torsion point information, you also have two to the e minus j torsion point information for anything. So you can play with this, uh, with this term here. Uh, and by extending Bob's isogeny with, uh, with some public parts, uh, with some, yeah, some parts that you can choose yourself, you can also play with this term. And if you do that, then uh, uh, actually, it turns out that the only concern is basically that 2 to the e is bigger than 3 to the f minus 1. And so what we do is we just guess the first i steps that are needed uh, to have this. Uh, so by brute force. Uh, and then uh, after that, we can guess uh, on the e to the f minus 1. OK. Now, uh, this is the, the main slide that I wanted to show still. Uh, so now I focused on this uh, y squared equals x two plus x. Now, the attack works whenever you have an endomorphism ring. Uh, for instance, psych is actually set up using a different curve, but it has an endomorphism uh, of the time 2 pi. And it's exactly the same attack. Because 
one of you or you will be in uh, practice. Um, uh, more general, you can really copy this attack uh, as soon as you have an endomorphism which is which has a small norm. Okay, and then you can apply for much as algorithm fits algorithm. Uh, and if you uh, rely on the KLPT algorithm, you can actually attack any uh, elliptic curve, any starting elliptic curve which has a known endomorphism. Okay, so in case there's an unknown endomorphism ring, and Luciano will mention more about that. Um, well, one thing you can always do without knowledge of the endomorphism ring, uh, or one thing you can always hope, always hope without knowledge of the endomorphism ring, is that your uh, C, your target C, is smooth. But if it's smooth, you don't need any known endomorphisms. You can just uh, compute such an effort in C, up in C. Uh, and again, you can uh, play around with these uh, parameters to uh, create more new. So you can play around here with torsion point information. You can extend the SSE. Uh, so I have information here. You can extend Bob's walk. Uh, you can rely on small torsion info. And you can guess the action on, uh, on some small detorsion. Yeah. And with these parameters, you can uh, create more leeway. Uh, and actually, this is the result of something that uh, uh, Luca told us uh, yesterday, and that Benjamin uh, Vizalovsky emailed to me today. That uh, if you make the analysis, uh, actually, you can prove that the attack works uh, in surface exponential time always without knowledge of the anomaly. So in L1 half, so that's the same complexity as for C. Okay. Um, and then uh, I have. Yeah, I think I should stop it. So checking reducibility, maybe I will just say this. Uh, there exists formula in the literature. The first step is a gluing step where you have to glue to a little curve because you should open up the two curve. And then you apply the Y settings and the Richelot formula. Formula will actually detect if you land on a split curve or not, by some division by zero. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, so these are the timings. So we have implemented the attack in magma. Uh, we break all proposed levels of sight uh, in under a day. Uh, there is an ongoing uh, effort in SageMath, uh, coordinated by Jacobo Kofi, but many people are involved, which pushes pushes down these timings uh, by by quite a factor already. Uh, I don't know by heart, uh, although I just looked at them a half an hour ago. Uh, but um, I think level one is about six minutes. Level one is about six minutes instead of one. Hour. Uh, and also wanted to stress that uh, we now attack Bob secretly, so. We had the secret tree to the FI suddenly using two to the D torsion point information. Uh, so there are no theoretical obstructions to general this. But this is definitely the easiest case to implement because two to I suddenly are well understood. Uh, for instance, the attack Alice is key, you have to implement three to the FI This machinery exists, but uh, this has not been implemented. Okay, yeah, and I will uh, skip that. Uh, okay, so thank you. Many questions, but we only have time for very, one very quick one. And I'll have to move back to the break. Is anyone going to see the quick one? Otherwise, we can. Yeah, Drew. It's not a quick Well, it's a quick question to ask. I don't necessarily want to answer right now, but it might be asked if not just about it to everyone in the room. Are there applications of this to things other than cryptography that the compute problems and not uh, yeah, it's a question for everyone in the room. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it would be great to find a constructive application. Maybe yeah. we can move the rest of the bow to hand to the great in the interest of time and thank him again.